I remember thinking in 2015 that Melanie Martinez would break mainstream music in a big way, kind of like Halsey. She never did, and perhaps that's because her shtick was a little too weird. It's one thing to talk about tough experiences you had as a child, it's another to center your entire brand and music around infantile things as an adult especially when it's combined with explicit content at times. It's off-putting and can come across creepy. It's only made worse when the lyrics of the music are immature and delivered with over-the-top ham-fisted elementary references, which only makes the emotional intent, if any, sound contrived, which ultimately left her 2015 debut, Crybaby, feeling like an album that is more style than substance. There are glimmers of hope, such as Pity Party, which flow well, Mrs. Potato Head tackles the concept of pressures of young people feeling like they need to go under the knife to be beautiful pretty decently. Or Dollhouse, which is a fine concept in theory. Comparing family troubles to the fake perfect happy of toy dolls is somewhat a part of the pop canon, but Melanie's approach to this topic hinders it from being emotionally substantial. Some of the material is just icky, such as Tag Your It and Milk and Cookies. It's a prime example of the other material on her album that goes overboard with its infantile nature, while also not offering much in value of interesting production choices, just made a lot of the material age like milk. It's also important to mention that those two songs, Milk and Cookies and Tag Your It, talk about the crybaby character getting assaulted. Combining assault with an infantile aesthetic is just gross. Perhaps Melanie's intentions with these subjects weren't nefarious, but they weren't given much care. One word to describe the nature of the album is tacky. Still, there's consistency in Melanie's narrative, even if not well put together or having much attention to detail. It's not the worst album of the Tumblr era, and it does generally have some catchy songs. The album appealed to a very wide Tumblr niche community, and young kids going through their edgy phase. And trust me, I would know. Realistically, the infantile music and themes should have stopped after this record. But she stretched this character narrative out to 2019 with her second album, K through 12, which also came with a movie. The album is simply horrible from top to bottom. Tacky and terrible songwriting, heavy vocal manipulation, and soulless production. The narrative of the album is flimsy. There's zero progression from this album. The intended political messages are baseline and read like chronically online mantras. So her sophomore album was like an even worse version of Crybaby, narratively and sonically. It just felt redundant. There was no reason to revisit this territory, especially when there's such a massive regression, and most of the themes of the songs just felt even more immature and half-baked. Funnily enough, in retrospect, some of her writing choices on this album, and really throughout her entire career, almost reminds me of the TikTok nursery rhyme trend. You know, songs like A, B, C, D, E, F, U and Twinkle Twinkle Little Bitch. Granted, Melanie does do a slightly better job at connecting the nursery rhyme themes to the actual meaning of the songs, but it's just so similar. And that leads us to her third and most recent album, Portals, where Melanie made a huge spectacle about offing the crybaby character and debuting a new creature that many have said resembles the work of Bjork. Don't be confused though, the actual music on the record is worlds away from Bjork. Her lead single, Death, was a genuine step away from the crybaby aesthetic and sound, even if it's just diet Billie Eilish with generic platitudes for lyrics. While vocal manipulation is used as an instrument at times for effect, there's heavy vocal processing on nearly every single song on the album, which at times is clearly trying to mask lack of vocal proficiency. The album also has consistent lyrical blunders, it mostly reads like pseudo-poetry that wants you to make you think it's saying something grand, but it isn't saying much at all. Like on Moon Cycle, a song about her period, the lyrics read, Why you always act so serious? I said, baby boy, you know I'm on my period. He bit the cherry down, he's delirious. Seeing red figures in his mirrors and acting like a real tough furious. Blood swimming turned him amphibious. Or Nymphology. It's Nymphology, not Psychology. Be the manic pixie dream girl that you ought to be. Damaged oddity bought by Sotheby's. Auctioned to a selfish man that thinks he's the prophecy. You can't even spell, but you're an expert in anthology. 
Then she goes on to spell nymphology and says, that's nymphology. Or on Light Shower, where she intends to express the rush of starting a relationship. But it just reminds me of the phase you go through in middle school where you're trying to write poetry or a song and just trying so hard to make everything sound clever, but it just ends up clunky and bad. As bright as the sun, give me your vitamin D. Let's run into another dimension. You make me feel like I'm on drugs. I'm screaming like a kettle on a stove. Slowly but surely, after the first few tracks of this album, the sound and lyrics of Melanie's circa Crybaby era start creeping back in to where it almost engulfs the entire project. By the end of the album, you get the impression that this record was only a transformation in image and hardly has anything to do with the music itself. It's the same childish formula, just with a new aesthetic. Her concepts are also never fully realized, which is an indication that concept albums might not be her strong suit. She's had a go at it three times with three similar results, rendering Melanie as an artist who is more style over substance. <laughs> 